There's been a huge paradigm shift, and really when we look at what social's all about now, there was a time when it was community building and owned properties and how many fans you could attract and then creating this feedback loop that was a constant feedback loop. But the reality is people are more sophisticated now. Uh, they don't necessarily look at social networks as a place, and for the most part they don't, as a place where they're going to interact with brands. Uh, they're a place where there's a utility, and that utility could be interacting with friends and family, which is Facebook, understanding what's happening in the world right now, which is Twitter, uh, building their career, which is LinkedIn, um, sharing the things that are happening to them as they're happening visually, which is a place like Instagram, and increasingly video is allowing them to express themselves in ways that they weren't able to before. Um, you know, a great example of that is actually Snapchat, where video is what's powering a lot of the user interactions on that platform now, and the ability to create these stories that allow other people to see what your day is like. Um, for brands, though, that requires a new way of thinking and thinking about your community not as the number of people who follow you or the number of people who like you, but community as being the number of people who come in contact with your content and who actually participate with your content, having come into contact with it. So when we think about dollars uh, shifting out of television into digital and into social, when it comes to video, um, what's really driving it from what we've seen isn't necessarily um, clients saying, hey, let's take this bucket and then move that bucket over here. Uh, it's actually taking this interim step, which is to say, why are we looking at video differently? from what's being placed in television and broadcast and cable and what's being placed in a digital and social realm. We should look at all of this as video. And once we've done that, let's look at what's performing and how we know it's performing. Once they make that shift, then we're starting to see, in some cases, dollar shifting, uh, and in some cases, not necessarily, depending on how performance goes, but it's really a shift in paradigm, not necessarily about where the dollars are being spent, but in how you look at what is video, and not so much about where it actually gets placed. One of the interesting things that we've seen is on a platform like Facebook, which has enormous reach, um, you actually can create enormous amounts of engagement through reach and not necessarily by, say, optimizing towards engagement. And it's one of the things that we actually test out for our clients because it depends on the situation, it depends on the client. Um, but there are cases where that does happen. Yes, it is something that is, you know, visible when you're talking about Facebook or another social network and is not necessarily visible when you're talking about television from like a broadcast or a network standpoint. Um, but even there, there are ways that we're able to see the impact that what we're placing on broadcast and cable has uh, in platforms like Twitter or Facebook when people actually respond to that and talk about it. And it's not a direct engagement, but it still allows us to understand we're having an impact. I can tell you that we did have the experience with um, a QSR in the past where we went dark on television and we kept steady with social and actually added dollars to social and social video. When that happened, we actually were able to see the in-store sales uh, not only stay steady, but go up. And this was contrary to all of the modeling that they had had traditionally, which showed them that if they spent X number of dollars on television, they would get X amount of foot traffic and sales in store. It completely shifted their thinking about what social can drive versus what television can drive.